In the previous laboratory experiment, you were introduced to RC, RL, and LC circuits. Now, in this experiment, we will combine a resistor, capacitor, and inductor to create a series RLC circuit. To begin this experiment, we will use the DMM to measure the resistance of this inductor coil. And once we have recorded this value, we will also use the DMM to confirm that the decade resistor has been set to 500 ohms. We will then construct an RLC circuit using the decade resistor, the decade capacitor, the inductor, and our function generator. The capacitor will be set to a value of 0.1 microfarads, and the function generator should be set to produce a sine wave with a frequency of 750 hertz. We will set the amplitude of the function generator by using the DMM to probe the RMS voltage of the generator. The function generator should be adjusted so that the voltage is as close to 3 volts as possible. Next, we will measure and record the voltages across each component in our circuit. But remember that because this is an AC circuit and we are measuring RMS voltage, that the voltage drop should not be expected to add to the supply voltage. With the RMS voltage across the resistor, capacitor, and inductor determined, the RMS current, impedance, inductive reactance, and inductance of the inductor may be calculated. For the next part of the procedure, we will leave the DMM test leads placed across the decade resistor. Then we will slowly increase the frequency on the function generator until the voltage determined by the DMM stops increasing. The frequency that correlates to the maximum voltage on the DMM will be considered an experimental value for the resonant frequency of the inductor. We will then adjust the frequency of the function generator for a number of calculated data points between 500 hertz above and below this resonant frequency. At each chosen value, the voltage across the resistor should be measured and recorded. By plotting this data, we may be able to determine a more accurate value for the resonant frequency, which should be the peak of our graph. We can then compare this value to a theoretic resonant frequency calculated from the formulas provided in the laboratory manual. In the last procedure for this experiment, we will use the plotted data to determine the bandwidth of the inductor. Some additional calculations for finding various quality factors of the resonant frequency should also be completed.